Okay guys, let's get straight into it. I'm gonna show you how to install a Veritas 8 alarm panel. This is quite universal, so it can relate to other ones. And if there's any other ones you want me to do, let me know. So take out the screws in the circuit board so you can pop it off and mount the back plate to the wall. First of all, mark where you're going to drill your holes. Then drill them out, put the red roll plugs in. Then pop your cables through that circular slot in the middle there. I'm assuming you've already ran your cables to your detectors. I would advise doing that first of all. Then just loosely tighten on the back plate. Put in your mains cable. Please make sure it's dead and you're not doing anything with any live cables and marry them up to the cables that are in the control panel, you know, so you blue to blue, you brown to brown, and the earth goes in the middle. Right, so you see how it says hall there on the cable, and it also says on another one, uh, bed PA. You need to label your cables before, uh, you need to label your cables as you actually are installing them. Then after that, put some tape around each cable, I'm right on the label of that cable that you've ran. This just makes it so much easier. You need to always label your cables when you're running them back. Otherwise, you won't know which one's which. Then once you've labeled them all with a piece of tape where it's nice and neat, you can cut the cables back so it's you've got them to the correct length what you need them for the install. On this system, I've got a door contact some PIRs, a panic alarm, just some general stuff that you will likely have on yours so you can see how it's installed. Now you need to strip your cable back. Don't do it the way I've just done it here because to be honest, I just kind of did this to show off a little bit. This is how you pop the cable out if you do it all at once. But I'm going to show you how I think you should do it if you're not used to snipping cable. Just make a splice in the middle there and pull it back and you'll find a little string inside the cable. Then you can use that string to pull it back and you can ex expose the inner cores. Do this with all the cables. Now once you've done this, you need to then link the cables together. So separate them all, put together the red and black, the blue and yellow, the green and white, and the brown and orange if you are using an eight core cable, and then twist them together like I'm doing here. And do this for all the cables throughout. Doesn't matter what zone it is or whether you're putting on a keypad or whether it's a sounder or anything like that, which I have got a cable here for as well to show you how to wire that. Just make them nice and neat and put them all together. Then you'll have something that looks like this. Pop in your circuit board. and pop the AC cables back in. Also, before putting in the circuit board, just completely tighten up the back plate because you've got all your cables in now. And we're gonna start from left to right with the bell cable to begin with. So identify that. So you don't need your brown and orange on this bell cable. So in this circumstance, just twist them around the cable. Any cores that you don't need, just twist them around the bottom. Don't cut them away, because you may need them in future if ever there's a break in the cable and you need to use it as a spare. Now take the white cable next to the green and bend that away, because on the bell, you're gonna be using five cores. Then to strip back the inner core, you just lightly put some pressure and you pull it back and you can twist off the end and expose the metal sheath. Then put the red into the power, into the positive, and put the black into the bell, which is the bell trigger. It's just labeled up on this panel as bell. And tighten that up. And then get your yellow and put that into the tamper. And your blue and put that into zero volts, zero V. 
And your final one for the sound will be the green. You put that into strobe, STB, and tighten that up. Then we're going to move on to our first zone, which is a front door contact. So we don't need power on a front door contact or the spare orange and brown. We just need the green and white for the tamper and the blue and yellow for the zone. So put the blue and yellow into zone one and just leave it like that for now. Then move to hall, put the blue and yellow into the zone. In this, you will need power. So take away the brown and orange, tuck them away, leave the red and black out and the green and white and put the blue and yellow into zone two. So we're gonna go through and do it in stages and do the zones first of all. Next one we have put in is the kitchen. Just a common one that you may have. It's a motion sensor. So the hall and the kitchen are motion sensors. So they do need power. Put the blue and yellow into the zone and tighten that up. And the next one we find is the landing. Again, same process, put the blue and yellow into the zone. The landing is a landing motion sensor. That's important because later on we're gonna set up our part set and you need to know how to emit that automatically on a part set. Now the last one we're gonna do here is a panic alarm. A panic alarm, much like a door contact, doesn't need power. So you just need your blue and yellow going into the zone and your green and white left out because that's going to be part of your tamper circuit, which is labeled up on the board as TAMP. You can just see it there, two slots to the right or three slots to the right of the bell. So put that in there. Now, as you will see here, you've got some extra zones not being used, okay? Two of them already have links in, in seven and eight, and you need to put a link in the other one. So get a little piece of cable and splice it, and then create your own link and put it into that zone just to link it out. Now we're doing the power for the sensors that need power, the motion sensors. So get the red and blacks and just copy what I'm doing here. Grab them all about two inches down and untwist them individually. Put the reds together and the blacks together. Okay, now twist those ones together so the blacks going together and the reds are going together this is what's going to give you your power for your sensors <clears throat> and once you've done that cut them back at the top and expose the metal sheath of them all There we go, and twist them together. Okay, so I'm just gonna expose the black sheet here. And you twist the metals together. So the blacks are all getting twisted together and the reds are all getting twisted together. And the black will go into the negative of the orcs and the red will go into the positive of the orcs. You can see I'm putting them into the slot there. Tighten that up. Now it's time to move on to our tamper. Now the tamper works like a daisy chain. Now I've taken this bit quite slowly because really this is a bit where a lot of people will get confused on. You need to link each cable into the next cable. So untwist them all by about two inches down, just like you did with the power. And then get one piece of one of them and one piece of another one of, of the other cable and twist them together so you're joining two cables together with one of the uh, inner cores of each. So I'm just so you can see what I've done there and then you grab the next cable along and twist those two together and you're making a daisy chain. It's the best way I can describe it. It's a loop. Because a global tamper circuit is monitoring the global tamper of the of all the devices that are on it. More modern systems and more complex systems will have individual tampers, but we can worry about that another time. You also can do that on this panel with end of line resistors, or that might just be the R8 panel. Anyway, daisy chain, just as you've seen there, then 
you splice and twist together each part of the da daisy chain so the whole system has got a continuous loop. And once you've done that, you're going to need to secure each one of those cables that are together. I usually like to solder it, to be honest, but it's unlikely you've got a soldering gun or a soldering iron. So instead of that, I'm going to use good old chalky block, which you're going to see in a second. we go don't just twist them together and put some tape around it it's a it's a common amateur error really that to be honest it doesn't provide it's not good enough long term i mean i, I have seen it where it's lasted fine for 20 years but if you just put some chalky block on it you're going to cause yourself no chance of any problems there we go and then you can put each of the legs of the tamper circuit into the tamper circuit that's on the control board there. Now, I've actually made an error here, and I left it in because to show you what you can do if you make an error. And the error I made is, you'll see another green and white cable down there in the bottom right. That's the panic alarm tamper. I just forgot, it, forgot to add it into the loop. So I'm gonna go here and put this into the tamper circuit, but you're going to see me in a minute realize that I've made a cock up. And I'll just show you, in case you make this same mistake, how easy it is to fix. There we go, I've spotted it. <laughs> what a muppet. Anyway, there's one there. So, <laughs> take a leg out of the tamper. So, you've got one leg left in the tamper, okay? And now, untwist that spare leg that we've got for the panic alarm and we're going to put the leg that was previously in the board and we're going to twist that together with the leg of the panic alarm one of the legs of the panic alarm tamper then we can do the same again twist those two inner sheaths together put a chalky block on there and now put that single leg that we've got into the control panel and problem solved. There we go. So it's that easy if you just need to add extra devices into the tamper circuit. <clears throat> that is now all our wiring done on the control panel, guys. So just to tidy it up, you know, so there are some extra terminals here, sorry, such as I'm pointing at a keypad there. I can show you how to put a keypad in, in a future video. Uh, and a speaker just goes into the one next to the bell if you're going to put a speaker onto your system. They usually come with it. Put a cover on your mains cover. It comes with the panel, a little square cover, just to protect from the uh, screws. But I didn't have one with me here because it's a second-hand panel. Then after you've done that, get your cables and put them up behind the control panel. It just makes it a lot easier and looks better, essentially. So we're all done. Pop the control panel out. And all that now we can just tuck behind the panel. It's all labeled up, so we need to get access to it. It's dead easy in future, and it just makes it look a bit neater, say, if you're coming to do testing and things like that. So there we go. Add your backup battery, your lead-acid battery. goes onto these legs here, black to black and red to red. Trust me, you don't want to get them the wrong way around. It'll give you a pretty big bang. Certainly wake you up if you're half asleep and date your battery because it's important that you change your battery every five years and it's easy to forget when you last did it. So just get a Sharpie or a bit of tape and put it on so you can write and put what date you installed the battery so you'll know when to change it. Now it's time to get the cover for the control panel because that can go back on now. So just make sure all your cables are out of the way because when you, you don't want to get your cable trapped where you're putting those screws in um, and then end up screwing through one of the cables. It's a bit of a pain. So secure it on there and pack.
power the system up. Now I've powered the system up already here. You power the system up and on initial power up, it'll start beeping. The default code is 4321. So put in the code 4321 to stop the beeping. And then after you've done that, put in, just as I'm doing here, 1, 2, 3, 4, and program. This will take you into the engineer's mode. Just copy what I do here. 0, 0. And then press number 7 and press program. 0, 1. Press number 2 and 3 and press program. Now we're going to go on to... 25 which is programming the current date it's in six numbers and 26 and we program the current time which again is done in six numbers then after that we're going to go on to the zone list uh, so 1 1 start zone 1 which is number 6 we want as an entry and exit for a front door that is common 1 2 inhibited entry for a hall PIR that's what we want that is common 1, 3 is a normal guard zone. Now, your system might need to be set up slightly different, so I would consult the manual for this bit, but this is how you do it and change individual zones. Now, 1, 5, I changed to number 7 because I need it to be a panic alarm. I'm not using 1, 6, 1, 7, 1, 8, so I don't need to change them. They're linked out. Then I've went 5, 1, and now this is to omit certain zones from a night set. So I turned off number 4 there. Because I don't need it on a night set. That's my landing sensor. I want that emitted. And press program. Now 2, 1. This makes an entry and exit for a part set. So I want 1 and 2. Which is my front door and hall on a part set. Then 2, 2 is any inhibited entries. Motion sensors or sensors that are seen on the entrance route. 2, 3 are guard zones. So I don't want zone 1 as a guard zone. That's an instant alarm. I want 3 and 5 as, an, as a guard zone. Press program. And there you go. I've now programmed the part sets. And now to change your user code, put in the 4321 program, 60, and put in your new four digits. After you've done that, press program, and you've programmed your new user code. Now to test, put in your user code, program 05 4 will test the bell sorry the speaker 3 will test the entry and exit route 2 will test the strobe and 1 will test the bell now if you click reset and then 1 9 you put the system into a walk test and you can go and test each individual uh, device so you know that it's working and you're all done you've done your testing you press reset to come out jobs are good if there's any bits you would like me to run over in more detail, let me know. If there's any other control panels that you would like me to wire up for you so you can just follow the instructions, that's no problem at all as well. Any comments or any questions, just post them in the comments. Uh, more videos to come soon, guys. So if it was helpful, please give it a like and think about subscribing. See you on the next one.